Hi, my name is Cece Hall and I'm an Applications Analyst here at Lightcore Biosciences. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to utilize the program, Background Program Builder and also build your own Background Program. Uh, background Programs were released in version 1.4.02 of the software and it's similar to an auto program in that it allows you to build your own or to run the program without having to actually be by your instrument. But the benefit of using a background program is that you can make the auto program do essentially anything you want it to do. I like to use the VNC viewer just because it's, it's easy and allows you to use your keyboard more. Um, so now I'm using my VNC viewer and if you need help on how to set that up, there's a video on our support website on how to do that, how to connect to your computer. Here we're going to go to auto programs and this is where you can locate the program builder right here so we'll select that one and that will take you to the builder on this first screen here uh, we can see we have some um, files already existing and we can always open one of these background programs we can start one of these background programs or we can open a new one so I'm going to start by opening a new background program and that's going to take me to the build right down here so we'll click new BP and I have one open but that's okay Nice, so now you see I'm in the build screen. So this is where I will add my building blocks. And there are a few groups of building blocks. Um, these first two are the ones right here, are the ones we're going to be using. These two are um, libraries, so you might get to use them later. And if you need more information on this, it's gonna, you can always find it in the background program uh, manual. So let's see here, we'll op uh, what I'm going to do, or actually the statements here, they relate to something that does something to the instrument. So it could be like logging a data point, it can be running a background program, etc. And then the program flow control, that kind of controls the, how your program is flowing. So we're going to start by creating, I'm going to give you a little example here just to show you how you would you know, use these different buttons and things. We're going to start with a simple auto program that does an auto log. So I'm going to use here my program flow control. I'm going to scroll down and find the loop statement right here. And then once this is highlighted, I'm going to click this insert button to get it into my screen. Click insert. And what the loop does is that it, um, whatever is inside this loop, it's going to do it for a certain amount of time or a certain number of times. So right now it's set to five, so it's going to go through this loop five times. Um, then I want to add a wait. So I want it to wait for a certain amount of time inside this loop before it logs the data points. So I'm going to go down here to my wait here. There's a few different options. So I can use the child here to put it inside this loop. So if I click child, it will add it inside. Um, you can see here if I close my loop, it will hide what's, whatever is inside. Um, now I can also highlight this one. I'm going to add a log right here. So if I just insert it without doing child, it will just put it outside the loop. But I can always use these arrows down here to move it inside the loop. Okay, so now we've created a very simple um, auto logging program that logs, um, right now it's gonna log five times and it's gonna log every 10 seconds. And if we wanna change these, we will go to the set screen down here. And we'll go up here. I'll start by going up to the loop. And I want this one to log for, let's say, a certain amount of time. So I'm gonna select duration. And then I want it to log for maybe 10 minutes. So I'll select 10 minutes here on the right side, options. And then I'll go down to my wait. And I want this one too. So I want it to wait for, let's say, fast auto logging. So I want it to wait for two seconds and then do a log. If I go down to this log statement here, you can see that it doesn't just log. It also, there's other actions here. So I can open a file or I can record data record remark or close the file, but I want to record data. And then here, so right now everything in my log options is set as what I have in my log options, but I can also change these. So for example, let's say I wanted it to always not do a flash, for example. Although maybe I have some flash uh, set up in my regular uh, log options, here I can just override that. 
Nice. Okay, so I built my uh, auto logging program and I want to save this. So I'm going to go up here to um, the naming and then I'm not going to change it. I'll just leave whatever it is, but I'll click done. So now I've actually not saved it, but if you click save here, you'll see that it adds the dot pi. So now it's been saved. So we'll go back to, and now we'll move on to the start button here. So I'm done with my program. I've saved it. And uh, right now I have some other stuff, so we'll just clear this one. Um, I'm going to click start. And then it's going to show you up here what it's doing. So it's going to wait for two seconds, and then it's going to do a log. So right now it's not doing a log because I don't have a log file open, but it's, you can see here it's logging every two seconds, so what I told it. Now, let's say you have, maybe you have more things inside this loop. So some of those things may take a little bit longer time. So you might notice that although you set a wait for two seconds, it's not logging every two seconds. Maybe it's logging every three seconds. Better practice than to use a wait is actually to use a different statement. So we'll go back here into the build screen. And then we are going to delete this wait. So I'm going to click down here, delete. And then we'll go back to the set screen. I'll go back up here to the loop. And I can utilize this minimum time per cycle. I'm going to put this one to two seconds. And now we'll go, we can save this one again here. It's going to tell me I already have one, but that's okay. We'll save. We'll go back to the start menu. We'll clear, I'll, I'll, I'll just clear this one. And then we will start this program. Again, it's going to skip. There's not going to be a log, but you see every two seconds. So same thing. And we can also go down to this monitor screen down here. And this is going to display, this is where your logging pro background program is show up. So you might be running more than one at a time. You can always highlight one and it will show you what's happening inside it. And then you can always use these pause and trigger, uh, trigger events, uh, controls. So we'll, we'll just click cancel here. Um, okay, so we've built a very uh, nice little background program, but let's say we wanted to be even more fancy and add a dialog to this one. So we, would, uh, we want the user to select what the duration should be and what the uh, log interval should be. So then we are going to add first a dialog and we need to add two variables to this dialog. So we need to add a duration uh, variable and we need to add a log interval variable. So I'm going to go up here, create these two variables. I'm going to use the sign statement right here. And then I'm going to use insert. And then I'm going to move this one up to the top. So I'm going to use this little button down here. And I can always do another insert, but I can also copy the statement. So we'll copy down here and then we'll paste. Okay, so now I've created my two variables. They don't have the, the right name or anything like that, but we'll change that in the set screen later. Uh, and now we'll go down and add a dialog. Let's see here on the left side. Insert. Okay, I have my two variables, I have my dialog, and I have my little auto program. So we'll go to the set screen, and then we'll change the inside of these uh, variables. So my first variable, I want it to be called duration. So this is how long my auto log program is going to run for. Duration click done and this is where I can set a default value so what it's going to show when I start it I'm going to set it to 10 and then I have to go down here and select the dialog interface so I will select an edit box so that allows the user to put in whatever value they want and then we're going to get edit box units box units so you have to you see how it says it's a string so you need to have your quotation marks around it. So I'm just going to, I like to use the typing. So yeah, I, I just click, yeah, let's see here, this. And then you click around it and that allows you to actually use the keyboard. Done. Okay, and then item label. We will label this one duration again. So this is what the user will see when they uh, type their value in. And then we'll, uh, we don't need a description, but we can leave it there just so you can see what it does. Um, we'll do the same thing for our um, log interval. So we'll go down here. And this one will be called, we'll just call it interval. Interval. 
done. And that will also be a value or expression, and then we'll give it a default value of, let's say, five seconds. Done. And then dialog interface, we'll do the same thing. We'll have an edit box. And then edit box units will be, um, we can use the typing thing on this one, uh, it will be seconds. Done. Okay, item label will be log interval. Done. Um, okay, and then we uh, go to our dialog. And this is just some di default text, what will show up in the dialog. We'll, we'll just leave that for now, but we need to add our variables to this grid items box. So we'll add, um, let's type, I'm just gonna type something out here, and then duration. So I need to separate my two variables with a comma sign, and then interval. Hopefully I spell this right, done. Um, and then we have two buttons, so we're gonna have a continue button and a cancel button. Now I need to, so if I just do this, it's not gonna change anything in here in my loop. So I need to also select these variables inside the loop. So instead of having duration being 10 minutes here, I'm gonna have whatever the user typed in. So it's gonna be duration. So whatever the user typed in is gonna be assigned to this variable. So it can be whatever they select. And then instead of having minimum time per cycle, we're gonna do interval okay so now we've added a dialogue to this um, autolog and hopefully it works we'll start by saving okay we'll go down to here to our start uh, i'll just clear this one and we'll click start so now here is my dialogue box in, uh, dialogue box so first here we have duration so I'm going to put in, so right now, 10 minutes, and then log interval, 5 seconds. So I can change this if I want to, put whatever I want, but I'll leave this for now. So then we'll click continue down here. And then you can see here, so log one data point, and then 5 seconds later, it logged the next data point. We'll click cancel. Okay, that was a short little auto program. Okay, that was some of the basics in building your own background program. Now, if you have any additional questions, you can always go to our website, lycra.com, or you can contact us in Science and Support or your local uh, distribution partner. Thank you.